Yeah, I think so. Does it not work? I don't I just forget about it. All right, I need a volunteer. Okay, Brendan. All right. Stand stand right here. Okay. Hold this tight. Okay. So we're going to do a little demo on related rates here. And uh, so what I want you to do is I want you to focus on the line, okay, focus on the rope between Brandon and me. Brandon. What? Yeah. Okay, so now, so this line, the orange line, Okay, is going to be, we're going to label that as x. Okay. So in pre-calculus, that is any, any class prior to calculus, you do work with just the length of something. Okay. x is this long, whatever that length is. Okay. If I move this out, x is now this long. Okay. And so that's, when we talk about x, this is how long it, that's how long that rope is, okay? But in calculus, we are concerned about the rate that x is changing. Remember dx dt yesterday? dx dt? So if I walk, okay, I'm walking about two feet per second. Okay, then that means that dx dt, dx dt, which is the rate that x is changing by, is 2 feet per second. Okay, it's a rate. So no matter where I am, if I were to go faster, okay, again, just focus on this part, not the part that's down here. So if I walk faster... Okay, because x is growing, it's getting longer, dx dt is positive. Okay, now, and that might be like 3 feet per second or 4 feet per second. Okay, it's how fast I'm going. Now, if I go backwards, okay. Four feet per second, so I'm getting faster this way. Does that make sense? This is called a variable rate, and you can have all kinds of it. You can have two times the sine of x. So I'm going faster and slower and faster and slower. Okay, it can be anything. This can be any function. Okay? So this is x, and dx dt means how fast it's going. Okay? All right, another volunteer. Another volunteer. Okay. 
Yep, that's you. <laughs> Kayla. Okay. Your job is still to stay there. But now you're going to hold this one, too. Okay. Now, Kayla, you grab the end, hold it, it tight. You guys are going to have to clear out in the where she, cuz she's going to walk towards you guys. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Kayla, the length that of Kayla's rope represents y. Okay? So right now we're we have an x and a y and they are stationary. Okay? But now, and this forms a right angle right here. I put that a right angle there. Okay, Kayla gets the walk now. Okay, ooh, dy dt, dy dt. I'm seeing it. Dy dt is positive. Correct? Well, uh, until you're at the end of your rope. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> okay? So she just did a positive dy dt. Now do a negative dy dt. Okay. Now. So what we see here is that x and y are the distances, but dx dt and dt are the rates that how fast they change. And they can be positive or negative, whether or not they're growing. Now, what we're going to do is Now, Kayla and I have to do double duty. Forcing it to stay a right triangle. Okay, so they're both going to stay stationary. Okay, and then I'm going to walk backwards. Okay. So, tell me about dx dt. In general. Positive. Okay. It's not increasing unless I'm going faster than walking. The XDT is positive when I'm walking. Okay, tell me about the ZDT, which is the third side. Right. So Z here is also changing. In other words, DX, the XDT and the ZDT are related. Because if I if I move if I change x doesn't z automatically move? Okay, so they're related. Okay, now so and then if I go if I go closer, tell me about the x dt negative. Oh, 
Okay, now make be patient, busy. Now make the y to t negative. Now make the y to t negative. Okay. Okay, she's making the y to t negative, then the d to t is negative. Tell me about the x to t right now. Yeah. It's zero. Not only is it constant, it's zero. Because how much is x changing by? It's not changing. So, yeah. Okay, now we're going to do the fun one. Okay? You're going to walk and I'm going to walk. Okay? So you can walk any rate, I'm going to walk any rate. Right? So tell, look at what everything's going on, okay? So fast. Cruising. We're going to be had a couple of <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that was the only case where we had dx dt changing, okay, dy dt changing, and then dz dt also. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to go in. You stay where you are. I'm going in. dz dt stays in. Okay, this is the hardest one. So I'm going to go positive and you're going to go negative. And we got to try to keep this tight. So. Okay. Ready? Go. Dy dt is negative. <laughs> Dx dt is positive. Wow, this is terrible. Okay. Now, if we were to go at some certain rate, couldn't dz dt be zero? Yeah. 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 But if we, oh, if we screw it up in any way, <laughs> then dz dt would change. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now, all right, keep this up down. The last thing to point out is this. What's the area of a triangle? One half base times height. So what is the area with using these letters? One half x y. One half x y. Okay. So if I write this as a equals one half x y, and I say, hey, you know, even though we have sides, don't we also have the fact that the area is changing? I wonder how the area is changing with respect to the rate that x and y are changing. And so check this out. Um, the ADT, well, what we started yesterday, the rate that the area is changing by is equal to a constant one half. But we have to do the product rule on x and y. And anytime we're taking the derivative of x or y, we have to take it with respect to t. So the rate that the area is changing is one half of, now we're going to do product rule, derivative of the first one is dx dt times y plus, keep the first one the same, derivative of y with respect to t, dy dt. So get this crazy formula. This, the area, the rate that the area is changing, which is quite complicated, is dependent upon the x and y, which means the length of x and y at any given moment, but also the rate that x is changing by and the rate that y is changing by. Yeah. If we have like that last demonstration where z is the same but other two are going positive and negative, do we then get one half times zero and then the area would stay the same? The, the, the rate the area is changing would stay the same? Good question. I, I don't think so. Let me see here. If um, we, these are related by Pythagorean theorem, if z stayed constant, we'd have to say something like x squared plus y squared equals some constant. If you solve that for x or y, would it remain constant? Just via 
expect DT was a negative one and then yeah. dy dt was a positive one, then it would be the same as zero plus zero. Or you have both of zero times that. So if the, if the rate that each of these are changing by, then the thing, the thing is though, x and y would have to be the same length. at that specific moment that it's very constant. Let me look into that a little bit more so I can um, see. Does everybody see what he's saying? He's got, he's got a great question. Uh, if D stays the same, is the area of change, is the area the same all the time? And essentially if you had this one, and then you had this one, where this is still D, where it's still the same length, Y and Z, we get that? All right, our very first problem in the, on the tactic is going to, we're going to start, we're going to start even on the tactic now. Okay. Um, we have to go back. <laughs> Would we need a swivel then if we're just doing that? Or? Yeah. Okay. Keep on recording. advice as to how about how to go about these there's really three parts and it kind of fits the problem solving mode that we that we want to do that we kind of do for any kind of problem so there's three things for a related rate we're going to identify what we know we're going to identify what we want to know and then we're going to identify the equation that relates the variables. If you do this for every single problem, you're, you're guaranteed to get yourself pointed in the right direction. So in this problem, um, what do we know? Okay, the x squared plus y squared equals 25 is ultimately the equation that relates the variables. Okay, so that's where we put that one. So, give me either what we know or what we want to know. Okay, he says the x dt is equal to 8. So, we know that. Anything else we know? X is 3 and Y is 4. And 
what do we want to know in the problem? D, Y, and T. Can you see that? So, given these three things in that equation, tell us what D, Y, and T is. And it's, it is oftentimes helpful to draw a picture. For this particular problem, this is what the picture would look like. We have that x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So x, plus, x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared would come from the fact that the, the picture looks like this. Okay, x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So actually, this is a lot like the rope problem that we just did, where we know that x is, say, we can even put numbers in there just for our own good. This would be like 3 feet, and this is 4 feet. And if the x dt is, say, growing at 8 feet per second, the question is, what is y changing at? So dy dt, the answer is going to be in feet per second, but we have to figure out what it is. So the way you solve a related rate problem is you start with your equation. We're going to find the derivative of this, and we're going to see that's where we generate the dx dt's and the dy dt's. So the derivative of 2x, or pardon me, of x squared plus y squared plus 25 is 2x dx dt. It's actually very similar to implicit differentiation. Plus, the derivative of y squared is 2y times dy dt. And the derivative of 25, 0. It kind of makes sense. With this picture, if we move x and y, but 5 has to stay the same, then the 5 is not changing at all. Okay, the rate that the five is changing is zero. Okay, so we're out to solve for dy dt, so let's solve this bugger for dy dt and see what we get. So do a little algebra here. Two y dy dt is equal to negative two x dx dt. means that dy dt is equal to negative 2x dx dt divided by 2y dy dt. And these are multiplied here. It's 2 times y times dy dt. Wait, now we can cancel the... What's that? Can I just put 2y on the bottom? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For 2y, we leave the dy dt there. So we get divided by 2y. And we can cancel the 2s. So the final formula for dy dt is negative x dx dt over y. Now we can answer the question. We can say, all right, dy dt, now watch my notation here evaluated uh, we don't have to put logs in there I'll show you the technical way to do it but it gets a, it gets a little long dy dt evaluated at x equals 3 y equals 4 and dx dt equals 8 is equal to remember when we did that vertical line and we said evaluated at here's where you would list all of them all the variables. Okay, so we plug them in. Negative x, and I highly recommend putting units in if there are units. This problem, there are no units. So it's negative 3 times dx dt, which is 8, uh, divided by y, which is 4. 
So we get uh, negative 24 divided by 4, so that's negative 6. dy dt, evaluated at those values, is equal to negative 6. So try to imagine what's going on here. x is growing really fast at 8, let's pretend it's feet per second. If x is growing really fast at 8 feet per second, and the 5 has to stay the same, what has to happen to y? It's got to shrink. So that's why y is changing, and it has to change at a rate of negative 6 feet per second in order for that 5 to stay exactly where it belongs. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, let's do another one. Number 2. Let's look at that one. Go read it. change of the volume when the, when the radius is 6 inches. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little picture here. <laughs> so, we have this sphere. And uh, what's the volume of a sphere formula? P equals four thirds pi r cubed. So the volume in pre-calculus, again, that goes anything back, Jill. I probably did these problems in like seventh grade. What's the volume of a sphere when the radius is six? Okay. Well, that's old, that's old news now. Now we want to know, hey, let's suppose the radius is changing, then how fast is the volume changing? Okay. So tell me what else we know in this problem. Two, I spy two inches per minute. And that says that the, the radius is increasing at that rate. So tell me, using the proper notation, what does the two inches per minute mean? Dr dt. So we know this. We know dr dt is equal to two inches per minute. Put your units in. Okay. Put your units in. Okay. Is there anything else in the problem that we know? R equals 6, right? And what that means is at the volume is changing all the time, okay? And the volume is actually a variable rate. Means that how big the volume is, or how big the sphere is, influences how fast the volume is changing. I think the easiest one is, you know, when you're have you ever had to blow up a really big balloon? Okay, if you had to blow up one of those really big ones, now let's suppose you're, you're blowing into it. The first couple of breaths and that first 10 breaths are the fun ones, right? Because you start to see it grow. And then you're like blowing in it and it's just like it's not even changing. And you're blowing it again and it's just like not changing. Of course it's getting bigger, but you don't notice it, right? 
That's because the rate that the volume is changing by matters based upon the radius. Okay? The bigger the radius, you don't see that change as much. So here, we are specifying at the specific moment when the radius is six inches, answer the question. So what's the, what do we want to know in this problem? The DDT. So we want to know what is the DDT. Okay. All right, so let's solve it. So the way to solve the problem is to find the derivative of the equation. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to t. So every single variable okay, is going to is, is a really a function of time. So he starts off as the DDT equals, and then this is going to be 4 thirds times the 3 times the pi times r squared, and that's like what we have normally done with derivatives. But because r is dependent on time, that means that r is a function of time, which means we have to multiply by the derivative of r with respect to t. So it becomes dr dt. Now we got ourselves an equation. Let's clean it up a little bit. So this is the DDT is equal to 4 pi r squared dr dt. Then you go look back and say, hey, what are we trying to solve for? We want to know the DDT, the rate that the volume is changing by. And so we're going to plug in our radius and we're gonna plug in the rate that the radius is changing. And watch what happens when you plug in the units here. This becomes four times pi times, the radius is six inches, so it's six inches squared, and this is multiplied by the RDT, which is two inches per minute, So this becomes 4 times pi times 36, so 4 pi times 36 inches squared times 2 inches per minute. 36 times 4, that's 144. So it's 144 pi, oops, I forgot to multiply by 2, 288. 288 pi inches cubed per minute is the rate that the volume is changing by. Yeah, where did the inches cubed come from? Inches squared times inches per minute gives you inches cubed. It's a volume. How's the volume change? It's got to keep a cubic measure. So it's cubic inches per minute. All right, we'll do one last one. Number three. You read it. Start to do the setup, and then we'll do it together.
to it. Uh, what do we know? <clears throat> three to the edges. So uh, for the sake of it, I'm going to say the length of the side of my side is x. You could use s or whatever variable, it doesn't matter. But since it's a cube, all three of these are the same. Okay. So if I use x, what do I know? I know dxdt. dxdt is what? Three centimeters per second. Okay. What else do I know? Okay. The volume formula is actually easy. It's just x to the third. And what else do we know? And x is 10. So the moment that x is 10 centimeters. And finally, what do we want to know? I want to know dBdt. So at what rate is the volume of the cube changing? All right, so we're going to get it. The cube is growing in all directions. Okay, therefore, what is uh, this? So here we go. dbdt equals 3x squared dx dt. Actually, once you get the hang of this, you just set there. Okay, it's a lot like input to put notation. And so we plug them in 3 times 10 centimeters squared times 3 centimeters per second. Plug it in and let you know. And so that's 100 times 3 times 3. So that's 900 cubic centimeters per second is the rate that the volume is changing by at that precise moment. Yes? Does it make sense that if, if x were a different value, since x is in the formula for dvdt, that the, that the rate that the value is changing is different. It's not a constant rate. What's going on? Okay. Um, if you want to, you can start. You can work on those problems that are in the book in section 2.6. Okay. I really would recommend that you work on them off the side. But we're going to do the rest of these then on Monday and Tuesday. So do we have to stay? You won't see that notation on the EP exam either.